All right, chapter one, this is the evolution of nursing thought and action. Just a disclaimer, I don't own this material under fair use and providing lecture content for only my nursing students using this material. All content within is only for educational purposes for nursing students and not to provide medical advice. So, where did the nursing thought process come from? Who were the leaders in nursing that you might want to know their names? So Florence Nightingale, you will hear more about that on Lighting Day when we light the candles. Dorothea Dix, Clara Barton, Lillian Wald, Mary Brewster, Edward Lyon, Novena Dock, and Mary Mahoney. So think about which individual provided care in tents and was the founder of the American Red Cross. Any of these names sound familiar? Should be C, Clara Barton. When the war was over, Barton established the American Red Cross. So safe and effective nursing care. Many, many people were instrumental in advancing the profession of nursing, but looking at the contribu contributions of Clara Barton, Lillian Wald, and Lavina Dock, how does caring remain an essential aspect of the nurse's role? And then discuss how caring is demonstrated. Thought process. Florence Nightingale made tremendous difference in the care of soldiers. Um, she was the one who her big thing was hand washing. She saw that all these people were dying, but all we needed to do was wash our hands. So relate each competency of provide goal directed client centered care to the actions of Florence Nightingale and her nurses. They realized that goal centered if they just washed their hands, they would be able to reduce the amount of infections. Today, nurses are competent, caring professionals who have been trained to be able to provide critical thinking, communication, organization, leadership, advocacy, technical skills to ensure that clients receive effective and safe care. So this is what we propose to do for the next quarter uh, semester with you, is to get you thinking deeper about different things in health. So you may have been a CNA, you may have been a tech. That's at one level. What we need to do is have you think a little deeper now. So now you're looking at the clinical judgment, the critical thinking involved, the problem solving, it's no longer just taking a bunch of vital signs. It's now taking the next step. So clinical judgment is a process consisting of recognizing and analyzing cues. What's important, what's not. Prioritize your hypothesis. What do you think's happening to the patient? Generate solutions that would effectively prevent this from happening. Take action and evaluate your outcome. So when we talk about critical thinking, clinical judgment, reflective thinking, they all come up. Clinical judgment is at the time, at the bedside. What are you judging? What are you thinking? What are you sensing around the bed? What do you think about what's going on? Critical thinking means, okay, if I don't stop this, something bad's gonna happen. So critical thinking is thinking one step ahead of where this could lead the patient. Reflective thinking is thinking behind. So after you put in a Foley catheter, you reflect on what went well, what didn't go so well. How would I do this differently next time so that I don't provide an infection to the patient? Critical thinking and reflective thinking involves collecting and analyzing information and carefully considering options for action. So when we're up in the lab, you're going to be collecting data, 
thinking about it, deciding if it's junk or good, and then acting on it. So problem solving, you consider an issue and attempt to find a satisfactory solution. Nursing is, so the American Nurses Association in 1980 said that nursing was the diagnosis and treatment of human responses to actual and potential health problems. ANA in 2010 said that nursing practice is individualized. Every patient has their own individualized nursing care plan. Nurses care by establishing partnerships with other people like physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, doctors, pharmacists, other practitioners. Caring is central to the practice of registered nursing. So when we talk about a care plan and you're talking about the care that you provide, your caring is going to be different than another nurse's caring. Okay, we all come at this with different set of eyes, different lenses. The RN uses the nurse's process to plan and provide individualized care to the healthcare consumer. And a strong link exists between professional work environment and the RN's ability to provide that quality care and achieve quality outcomes. The ANA in 2015 said that nursing is the protection, promotion, and optimization of health and abilities, prevention of illness and injury, facilitation of healing, alleviation of suffering through the diagnosis and treatment of the human response and advocacy in the care of individuals, families, groups, communities, and populations. So you can see how nursing has evolved from nursing care that I do to someone to nursing care that I provide in the global community. So why do we even want to define nursing? Well, it helps the public understand the value of nurses. It helps differentiate our activities from those of medicine. And it helps students understand what is expected of them. So some qualities that a nurse should have, critical thinking skills, caring, compassionate, detail-oriented, organizational skills, speaking skills, listening skills, patience, competence, emotional stability, and physical stamina. The nursing is it a profession, an occupation, or a discipline? It depends on your thought process, right? So it could be one of all of those. It could be a job. It could be a lot of things. But we have a code of ethics. So that means that it is a profession because we are professionals when we are out there. It means that there's technical and scientific knowledge that's evaluated by a community of peers and has a service orientation and a code of ethics. So we'll be talking quite a bit about a code of ethics in one of your one credit courses. If it was viewed as an occupation, nursing is described as an occupation or a job, okay? In that light, it is fee for service. It's basically your hourly or wage earner, the employer, not the nurse, decides the conditions of practice and the nature of work. And nurse practice acts don't prevent nurses from functioning more autonomously. So it can be seen as an occupation, that's not where we want it. And then a discipline, so nurse, nursing as a discipline is scientifically based, self-governed, and it focuses on the ethical care of others. So you will have that in your ethical course. Nursing is a discipline driven by um, aspects of theory and practice, 
and nursing demands the mastery of both theoretical knowledge and clinical skills. And that's why some may not get through this program because there's a lot of theoretical knowledge and if you're a tester, that's great. You'll do really well on the tests, but some people can't get the clinical skills down. So it's one or the other. Either you're really good at the clinical skills or you're really good at the theoretical knowledge, but you need to be, the demand is that you have to master both. So it's not just good enough to be good in clinical. You have to be thinking good in clinical as well. So clicker check. One factor that prevents nursing from being described as a profession rather than as a job What did we just say? A profession, we tell them more about what they need, right? A job is like construction. You show up and they tell you what to do that day kind of thing. So nursing knowledge is based on um, scientific knowledge. Nurses create a care plan. Most nurses only work to earn a paycheck. That would be a job. But in general, most healthcare facilities, the organization dictates the work routine and the nurses' functions. The profession is more autonomous in controlling the practice environment. So nursing tells the healthcare facility more about what their job will and will not be. How can nursing improve its recognition as a profession? So we have standardized education requirements. We have a uniform um, continuing education requirements that we must do to keep our licenses. And that's across the states. Each state has its own, but there's all the way across the board, there are a number of continuing education requirements. Increased participation of nursing in professional organizations and educating the public about the true nature of nursing practice. So nursing education has a few different ways to get in. Um, as an RN, not as an LPN, I'm just talking RN right now. An RN degree could be a diploma program from a three-year program. It was hospital-based. Those people have been grandfathered in. It could be an associate's, and that's a two-year program at a community college, an ASN or an ABN. An associate's degree in nursing is a two-year. And a baccalaureate is four years or eight semesters, and it's only given in colleges and universities. The RN to BSN programs are that you already have an associate's and you enroll in a program of study that leads you to that BSN program. So there are five total levels of education for entry into practice. There's a diploma nurse that may still be out there in your job sites, an ADN or an ASN, a BSN or a BAN, so they could be both. They could be science or arts of nursing, an RN to BSN, a master's, and a doctorate. So a little bit about my role in nursing. I came in as a CNA, transitioned to an LPN during my senior year of nursing school BSN program. And then after a few years, I went for my master's degree in nursing education and then finally completed my doctorate in education. So not nursing, education doctorate, because I wanted to learn how to teach better, not how to nurse better. So that's a little bit about my background in nursing. So master's degrees programs, once you get them the BSN, you can go for a master's, which prepares the nurse to function as a more independent, autonomous role, such as a nurse practitioner, a clinical specialist, a nurse educator, a nurse informatic person, or a nurse administrator. And it usually takes two more years to complete that degree. There could be direct entry master degrees as well. So you 
and it's called like BSN and MSN kind of thing. And at the end of the completion, the student is eligible to take the NCLEX and is awarded a master's degree in nursing. So there's multiple different ways in and through nursing. So doctoral programs in nursing, DNP is a practice degree, so they want to practice in nursing and do research. Um, nursing science is a degree with a focus on research and practice. A philosophy degree, PhD, is a degree focused on scholarly research and knowledge generation, so they really love a lot of research. And then a direct entry doctoral degree is designed for second degree students who seek an accelerated path to a doctorate degree. There are tons of formal education that you have to do in CEs, so continuing education credits. The professional strategy is to maintain current knowledge. So many states require CE courses for renewal of your license. In-service education is stuff that's given by your work site. So nursing education at your hospital would also have in-service programs. You can also go to conferences and things like that to get CEs. CEU is a continuing education unit, and it's based on an hour of, of class. So however many CEUs it is that you need, in Florida it's 24. Um, so some states it's like 18, some it's 20, some it's 24, it just depends on the state. And then the state also tells you what kinds of nursing education um, things that you need to take, like child abuse has to be one, domestic violence has to be one, um, things like that that they regulate. So Benner, Patricia Benner is well known in nursing for her phases of nursing. So as a nursing student, you will at best be an advanced beginner when you get out of school. So a novice would be someone fresh out, an advanced beginner, then you go to the competent stage, the proficient stage, and then the expert. So novice is probably tends to be your first six months. Advanced beginner tends to be your first year. Competent is two to three years of practice. Proficient is three to five. An expert is after five years. So that is how her um, phases of nursing works. Now, if you were to leave med surge and go back to a cardiac floor, then you would be a novice nurse again coming into the cardiac area, okay? So every time we move to a different specialty or do move to a different field, then we're going back down in a novice role. Regulation of nursing practice. So I'm not sure how to get this any clearer on this slide, but this is how they regulate nursing practice in each state. So on the test, if they were to ask you who regulates nursing practice, it is the Nurse Practice Act from your board of nursing and the standards of practice for that type of nursing. Okay, so regulation, Nurse Practice Act, State Board of Nursing comes up with the Nurse Practice Act, and the standards of practice come up from a group of those nurses that get together and decide what are the standards that we are going to do. So there are standards for med surge nursing. There are standards from A1 for women's health neonatal nursing. There are neonatal nursing standards. There's pediatric standards. There's ICU standards. There's ER standards. So everywhere you go, whatever specialty you want to get in, there will be standards of practice around those kinds of nursing skills and competencies that you need to maintain. So the question on this clicker check, which organization is directly responsible for re regulating the practice of nursing in each state? In each state would be the State Board of Nursing. 
So the state legislature enacts Nursing Practice Act. The Nursing Practice Act creates a board of nursing. The board of nursing in each state is charged with regulating the practice of nursing under that state. There are professional organizations in each state and nationally and internationally. So there is the National Student Nurses Association, which represents nursing students. There's Sigma Theta Tau. And Sigma Theta Tau is a nursing society that you are inducted into with a certain GPA. And then, of course, there are specialty groups, like I said. So A1, NAN, PEDS, PALS, all those. Recipients of nursing care are individuals, often referred to as patients, clients, or persons, groups, families, or communities. I would put in there under here, it may be a faith community as well. And the types of care that we provide, direct and indirect. So a direct care would be a nursing home, a hospital, direct care. But there's also a lot of nurses that are behind the phone line doing indirect care as well. So a triage nurse, still a nurse. The purpose of nursing care, again, health promotion, illness prevention, health restoration, and end of life care. So through the whole life cycle. And the models of nursing care come from the case model, functional nursing, there's team nursing, there's primary nursing, and differentiated practice. What type of care is provided? So it depends if it's acute care, which is restorative, or long-term care, which is human assistance, assistive technologies, the more long-term care facilities. Where is healthcare provided? Hospitals, extended care, which is assisted living, rehab centers, ambulatory care centers, home health care agencies, community and public health centers. And the types of service, primary, secondary, tertiary. I cannot stress this enough on this slide. If you don't understand this, please look it up. Primary services are prevention. Secondary services are screenings. Tertiary care are treatment. That's all you need to remember for this. Then there is some others called restorative Okay, which is kind of like rehab, an ongoing PT. So part of our interprofessional care team is doctors, um, orthopods, advanced practitioners, physician assistants, nurses, um, encompassing RNs, LPNs, un unlicensed assisted personnel or CNAs or techs, UAPs and then pharmacists as well. There's also therapists and technologists as well in the hospital setting. Which healthcare provider dispenses medications and therapeutic solutions in hospitals, community pharmacies, and various healthcare settings? Is that a physician assistant, a registered nurse, a UAP, or a pharmacist? Hopefully you said pharmacist. So pharmacists prepare and dispense medications and therapeutic um, solutions. They collaborate with nurses and providers and other healthcare team members to ensure the selection of safe and effective medications to be included in the treatment plan. So they are one of our big partners that we work with so much. Financing healthcare, well, if we go to the doctor, somebody's got to pay for it. So how does that happen? Individual. So that's cash paying, individual private insurance, employment-based insurance, government, which is Medicaid or Medicare, and charitable organizations. Medicare public policy, a um, whole nother impact of the healthcare reform. So a lot of diagnostic related groupings, DRGs came into effect. And we had to make sure that we were charging for the right things because you can only charge for what you did. Managed care came through with HMOs, PPOs, point of service, and IDNs. Um, 
So a little bit about those HMOs and PPOs are the most common. Healthcare reform. The ANA recommends that we should really be looking at reforming the whole healthcare system. A work redesign, um, healthcare, is it a right or a privilege? Things like that, they go to the national level and the state level legislature to fight for these things. So if that's something that interests you, make sure that you connect with the American Nurses Association. Ensuring quality care, so continuous quality improvement processes. We have a lot of processes in place to look at our quality of our care. So there's process review, outcome review, and structure reviews that get done in the hospital to make sure that we're giving the best care. That has a lot to do with like the Joint Commission coming in and surveying. So societal trends that have influenced nursing practice, just the national economy the proportion of older adults in the U.S., changes in the healthcare consumer. They know more now. They've looked everything up before they get to you. Legislation, the women's movement, and collective bargaining have all changed or influenced nursing practice. And then a couple more slides. Um, trends in nursing practice. So the trends in nursing practice is more complementary and alternative medications are being used. We're expanding a variety of care locations, including like Walmart, um, little clinics out in the middle of nowhere, uh, interprofessional collaboration, expanded career roles, increased use of UAPs, influence on nurses with health policy issues, and divergence between high tech and high touch. So the more high tech we get, the less touch we actually do. So making sure that we are still high touch. Socratic reasoning. You discover you need to have a minor surgical procedure that necessitates several days of hospitalization. Your surgeon operates out of several hospitals. How do you choose which hospital you go to? Just a question. Ponder that. So hospital A is staffed by LPNs and LVNs and ADN nurses. Hospital B is staffed with a diploma and BSN charge nurses. Hospital C is staffed with ADN and BSN nurses and Hospital D is staffed with UAP and BSN nurses. Which hospital would you choose? What's your thoughts? Which one would you choose? This is why we need a differentiating um, entry into the profession. Your safest hospital would probably be Hospital C because it has both ADN and BSN nurses. Even better if master's degree nurses were the charge nurses. That's the push now to get masters at the bedside. All right, and that's it for now.